Hi, I'm Carrie Lawless, and today's decorating dilemma is what in the world do you do when your cabinets don't match? Well, we've got a great solution for you. So behind me is Holly and Natalia, and what they're doing right now is preparing. So Holly's getting everything cleaned off, making sure there's no grease on these cabinet doors so that everything will stick that we're gonna put on there. And Natalia is taping up to make sure we don't get anything on the walls. So stay with us, and we're gonna show you how to get this done. Natalia and Holly are here to help me solve this dilemma. I'm so excited. We've got a super cheap, super easy way to solve the problem. And what's going on here is everything in this house really needs like a dark espresso color to kind of hold things together. Don't y'all think? So when the homeowner bought this house, because I sold this house to them, their intention was to make these cabinets espresso to make them match. And it's just one of those projects that didn't make it and now they're selling. So we're gonna do that to pull this whole look together. Now, the way we're gonna simplify this process is, luckily enough, these cabinets are dark. We do this with oak as well, but when they're dark like this, we can typically do it with one coat. We are using a gel stain. This is my favorite gel stain because it is so durable. It is Old Masters and this is my typical combination that I use, Provincial and Dark Walnut. These are the two colors that I like for espresso. Um, I put them, in this roller pan and I use about two-thirds provincial and about a third espresso um, that's not a hard fast rule and you know it's going to change throughout because I'm just basically rolling it that way and um, so anyway it's going to be totally different let's get started <laughs> All right, so we've got everything taped up here. What I'm gonna do, because the side of my roller cannot get into this crevice, I'm just gonna take some of the gel stain and just get this edge covered. Now, I'm not gonna put a whole lot because then it'll smear under the tape and go onto the wall, then we'll have touch-ups to do later. But just having this on there helps us get all the way to the edge. So if you can see that, I just used a cheap little chip brush to do that. And then I'm gonna use this sponge roller. I love this roller because a lot of times it does the majority of the work for you when you're using gel stain. Now let me say the difference between gel stain and regular stain, regular wiping stain has to absorb into the wood. Gel stain sits on top and is extremely durable and will stick very well to a well prepped surface or a well clean surface, should I say. So as you can see, this is really kind of a one coat thing. I'm getting the transparency, or should I say the translucency, because you know you can see through it a little bit to still be able to see the wood grain. That's why we do this as opposed to painting. Painting dark cabinets makes some, it just cheapens the effect. You kind of lose the effect of the wood grain. But when you put the gel stain, you can still tell that they're wood, but it totally changes it. All right, so now the other thing about this is this gel stain is super wet right now, and so it's just kind of sliding around. Uh, stain or paint or any anything like that, it becomes tacky as you let it sit up. So what I'm gonna do is spread this on, and if it's just sliding around too much, I'm gonna let it tack up for just a few minutes and then I'm gonna test it again, and then I'm gonna roll right over this, and hopefully it'll be a one coat finish. Okay, so you, you might wanna film this, because I'm gonna talk as I do this for a minute. I'm going. All right, so we've got everything taped up here. What I'm gonna do, because the side of my roller cannot get into this crevice, I'm just gonna take some of the gel stain and just get this edge covered. Now, I'm not gonna put a whole lot because then it'll smear under the tape and go onto the wall, then we'll have touch-ups to do later. But just having this on there helps us get all the way to the edge. So if you can see that, I just used a cheap little chip brush to do that. And then I'm gonna use this sponge roller. I love this roller because a lot of times it does the majority of the work for you 
when you're using gel stain. Now let me say the difference between gel stain and regular stain, regular wiping stain has to absorb into the wood. Gel stain sits on top and is extremely durable and will stick very well to a well prepped surface or a well clean surface, should I say. So as you can see, this is really kind of a one coat thing. I'm getting the transparency or should I say the translucency because you know you can see through it a little bit to still be able to see the wood grain. That's why we do this as opposed to painting. Painting dark cabinets makes it, it just cheapens the effect. You kind of lose the effect of the wood grain. But when you put the gel stain, you can still tell that they're wood, but it totally changes it. All right, so now the other thing about this is this gel stain is super wet right now. And so it's just kind of sliding around. Uh, stain or paint or any, anything like that, it becomes tacky as you let it sit up. So what I'm gonna do is spread this on and if it's just sliding around too much, I'm gonna let it tack up for just a few minutes and then I'm gonna test it again and then I'm gonna roll right over this and hopefully it'll be a one coat finish. We decided in this case to leave the doors on to see if we can get away with it. When the wood is this dark and all we're doing is darkening a dark color already, you don't see the imperfections in the strokes like you would if I was going over something like yellow oak. So we're gonna try to get away with not taking these doors off. That is gonna save us a tremendous amount of time. One of the reasons is um, we can do the front and the back on the same day, which is really gonna save us some time. Oh, it's looking pretty already. Love this. So what I'm doing is the contoured areas that the roller really can't reach I am brushing that on just to get it in there. And then I'm gonna use this roller. Now, like I said, if you're trying to get that translucency, you want to use a foam roller. Very important. I try to do all these little areas like things you think people are never gonna see. I just think it's much more professional um, if somebody's cleaning the tops of the cabinets, I just have this thing. I don't want them to think that I stink. So I do the bottoms and the tops of the doors and all that kind of stuff. So, and because we've left them on, now I can do the inside at the same time, which is awesome. All right, I'm done. Look how easy that was. I let it tack up a little bit. I went back over it. I'm not touching that. That is perfect. So, ladies, now ready to get started? Oh, yes. <laughs> I have one question. Okay. Can you overdo it? Because I see some areas and I don't know if I just keep going over it, am I gonna make one part too opaque? Okay. You know, what? Okay, so yeah, it's actually the opposite of that. You will start pulling it back off. So what happens with this gel stain, and even can happen the following day, if you don't wait long enough, it can reactivate what's there and start actually pulling it off. And then you're gonna have way too much to blend back in. So basically when that happens, and yes, it has happened to me, it's a nightmare. So you take paint thinner, just wipe the whole door off. It is not worth trying to salvage that. So that's what I was saying earlier. You know, there's a delicate balance between when you need to, you know, when it's just tacky enough and when it's too tacky and it's gonna reactivate the thing and pull it all back off. So, but like I said, there is such a thing as paint thinner. No big deal, right? It's all fixable. So uh, we're gonna tackle this right now. This is it. This is the final product. I'm so excited at how this came out. I mean, how a little bit of gel stain. I think we used maybe one or two containers. I think they're $15 a piece. $30 of gel stain did this. Pulled the whole house together. These are simple little things you can do that are going to add significant value when you go to sell and make somebody want to pay top dollar. 
And if you're just gonna live in your house, just make it beautiful while you live there. Then when you get a cell, it'll already be done. I really hope you've enjoyed this DIY and I hope it's been helpful to you. Also, comment below. We wanna know what project you have going on right now and if there's any way we can help you with it, this is our Designaholic community we love to share. Also, please make sure to subscribe and ring the little bell for notifications because we want you to know when we've got something new coming out. Thanks for staying with us and we'll see you again real soon.